Is that Selma? Ring a ding ding. Today's episode of Film Learning is brought to you by VideoProc, the only full GPU accelerated video editing software that allows you to easily edit, cut, merge, convert 4K video files in a flash, reduce video size to safe storage, record your screen, and even more. Which means that with VideoProc, you don't have to switch to other tools. It is a one stop software with an intuitive and easy to use interface for both PC and Mac. For more information on video proc, including a seven day free trial and a sweet discount, check the links out in the description. Today on Film Learning, we're doing this. Hmm, I wonder where it goes. Do I make you horny, baby? Do I? Mm. Film Learning. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning some filmmaking and learning good. And on today's episode, we're going to another dimension thanks to this sonic ring portal effect from the movie Sonic the Hedgehog, if that wasn't obvious. It was, wasn't it? Oh. Anyway, in order to complete this effect, you need to shoot yourself or your actor pretending to open a portal with a ring or anything else you like, and then just reacting to said portal. You also need to grab a plate of whatever you want to be in the portal. And of course, it goes without saying you need to head to filmlearn.com slash downloads and grab the Sonic Ring Portal Effects Pack, which contains everything you're going to need to make this effect work. Now, of course, it goes without saying you are going to need a copy of After Effects and Cinema 4D to make this thing work. But apart from that, Let's get to work, shall we? Okay guys, here we are in After Effects and you can see I've got my project file open that contains an imported Cinema 4D file called Rings. Now we'll come back to After Effects, but for the start we'll be hanging out in Cinema 4D for this one. Now just be aware that if you don't plan on customizing the ring animation at all, you can jump ahead to when we start compositing. The timestamp will be in the description. So let's start by opening up the Cinema 4D file by selecting it heading to edit and clicking on edit original. Okay, here we are in Cinema 4D. Now I've done a slight bit of animation on the ring and the background, so they start at a ring size, which is, you know, small, and they jump up to portal size, which is a tad bigger, as you can see in the preview here. I've also included a version in the download pack of the portal just spinning idly, if you need that. The spinning actually works the same way the floating rocks do on my Rise of Skywalker video. There's a random effector and, well, you can just check that out in the card above. So you can totally move the camera around and get a little bit more advanced if you want here guys. You can bring in your own HDRI and import it right here. You can change the lighting of the scene to suit your own shot. You know, the usual stuff I talk about when working in cinema. You can customize this shot to look however you want. But when you are done with customizing the scene, we need to talk about the inside of the portal as well, as that's also rendered within Cinema 4D. So what you'll have to do is, and we've talked about this a few times in our film learning episodes, is you'll have to render out your video footage as a PNG sequence and then import it into Cinema in that material that is labelled BG down here. That's another thing I actually touch on in the Rise of Skywalker floating rocks effect, so once again the card is above. So for our first render, we want to just do the ring only. So what we're going to do is just turn the background off like so. So just make both these dots red. Now the top one is that it stops displaying in our display window right here. And the second one excludes it from the render entirely. You can now pop into render settings right up here, change the save name and the location, and then hit the render button and get that ring out of the way. Now once that's done, we're going to switch things around and render out the portal background. So let's turn the portal background back on and then we're going to click on this one here which represents the ring and we're going to turn that off and we're also going to turn off the sky object right here. We can then head up to render settings, change the save name to something like ring BG, designate a save location and render that out as well. Now once that's done, you're going to have a ring render that looks like this and you're going to have a background render that looks like this. Right, we have both our passes. Let's head back to After Effects and composite this thing together. Okay, back in After Effects and I've imported both my renders. Let's start by dropping our ring render into a new comp. There we go. And from there, I'm going to repeat that step, dropping that ring into yet another new comp. Only this time, I'm going to head to the project window and rename that second one in a ring. Lastly, I'm going to drop my background render also into its own comp. Right, so we have three comps. 
My next step is to start applying effects to our main ring layer. Firstly, I'm going to add some much needed motion blur. Now for this gang, my go-to plugin of choice is Real Smart Motion Blur. But if you need to use the native motion blur plugins in After Effects, you can go with CC Force Motion Blur or Pixel Motion Blur if you don't want to pay for something like Real Smart Motion Blur. I just believe it gives a much better result. Next up, my ring does look pretty janky spinning there as the motion blur plugin doesn't really understand how fast the ring is moving. And this is a flaw with a lot of post motion blur plugins. They can't deal with really speedy objects. So how do we solve that? Well, with a blur, of course. And since our ring is radial in shape, it seems fair that CC Radial Blur is what we're going to use. So let's set it to scratch. I'm then gonna set the amount to five, the quality to 100, and naturally, I'm gonna grab the target and place it smack bang in the center of our ring. You can now see our janky spinning is gone and the motion blur we crave is there. And folks, that's why I added the dirt and scratches and artifacts on the ring in Cinema 4D. If you had a completely flawless ring, it doesn't really look like it's spinning. But with some weathering, as the ring spins, you can see the flaws move, and with the blur added, it smooths out the ring while still selling the idea that it's spinning. Next up, I wanna add a little glow, just to give that ring the otherworldly feel. Now for this, I'm headed to the Red Giant VFX suite and their awesome optical glow plugin. But feel free to use the regular glow if you don't have this. Now all I did here is set the highlights only to 55%, I colorized the glow to a rich yellow, and of course I unmalted the glow in the extension function which leaves me with a subtle, not overpowering glow that just brightens the highlights. Alrighty, that's it for that layer. Now in this shot with long claw, you can see this fluid haze on the inside of the ring. So that's our next step. Let's head to the inner ring comp and get into it. Firstly, we're going to add a black solid to the comp. Drop that below our footage. Secondly, we'll head to effect, noise and grain and grab a fractal noise. Now from there, we're gonna change some stuff. Let's change the type to smeary, check on invert, set the contrast to 60, the brightness to 32. We'll then collapse down the transform settings, hit the stopwatch on rotation, head to the end of the comp and change it to minus one. We'll then set the scale to 75, set the offset to the center of the ring right here. We'll then set the complexity to 1.9 and then onto the sub settings. We'll set the sub influence to 48.5, the sub scaling to 67.1 and check on center subscale. We'll finally hold the alt key and hit the stopwatch on evolution and enter this expression. Time, asterisk, 40. Okay, we'll click off that and that might have been a lot of steps. And it looks like doo-doo, right? Well, yes it does. So let's keep going. And our next step is to turn that solid off because we don't need to see it. Let's then click on the ring comp and head to effect, distort and grab displacement map. Let's select the black solid and make sure we set the displacement to effects and masks. From there, We'll set both the horizontal and vertical to luminance, check on wrap pixels around, and crank up both to 32. You can now see we've totally messed up that ring. It's all wavy and liquidish and looks like crap, and it's far from done. So let's head back to our final shot, drop our inner ring comp in below our ring footage. From there, we'll set the scale to 93, and adjust the position to be in the center of the ring. Let's then trim those first few frames off so that it starts as the ring is almost fully expanded. And there we go. Next, well, I'm gonna copy and paste both the motion blur and the radial blur onto this layer from our ring layer above, like so. I might drop the radial blur down to around three as well. Last step, I'm gonna hit T to bring up opacity 
and drop that opacity down to around 68%. This sells the idea that it's a weird portal reflection and a lot more. Now, on to the portal background. Now we're not doing too much to this guys, but in the movie the portal destination has this ripple distortion, much like dropping a rock in water. So let's quickly build that. We'll start by adding a new solid, putting it under our background footage like so. We'll then head to effect, generate and grab radio waves. We'll then set the producer point to the center of our portal. Done. Set the parameters to each frame the expansion to 7.2, the lifespan to 2.9, set the color to white, the fade in time to 5.8, and the start width to 20, and the end width to one. Now at the moment, it kind of doesn't look very watery, so let's distort this a little more. Let's head to distort and add a wave warp. Let's set up the height to 12, the width to 41. We'll then hold the Alt key and hit the stopwatch on phase and type this expression. Time, asterisk, 20. That's gonna give us a little bit of variance in the wave pattern. Lastly, this whole wave thing is a bit too harsh. So let's soften it with a blur, a Gaussian blur. I'm gonna set this to say 10, done. Now. Let's turn that solid off. We'll select our background layer, and you know what we're doing. Let's head up and add a displacement map. From there, all we need to really do is repeat what we did with the previous displacement layer. Set the solid as our source, turn on effects and masks, set the channels to luminance, and let's set both parameters to 15 this time. The end result has the ripple well <laughs> rippling through our background layer giving us that watery texture. Nice. Now, let's put it all together. We'll drop the background comp in under our inner ring like so. Let's also copy the motion blur settings from the inner ring and paste them onto the background layer. Done. And we'll follow that up by dropping in, say, our background footage. Bam. And the final touch here is to drop a few choice lens flares as the ring is thrown and expands. For this, I added a solid. I set the blend mode on the solid to screen and then I used Red Giant's No Light Factory. I just grabbed the yellow flare from their preset menu, hit the stopwatch on scale, and merely increased the scale each frame until the ring was fully sized, and then I scaled it down to zero on the final frame here. Now, it doesn't matter if you use No Light Factory or Optical Flares or any other flare plugins that you have in After Effects. The basic idea is the same. You really just need to blow out the screen following the ring for a few frames to sell the idea of this ring generating a big power surge. And the end result looks like this. And that, my friends, is another effect mm, done. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. Today on Film Learning, we're doing this. Hmm, I wonder where it goes. Do I make you horny, baby? Do I? So guys, that is my take on a Sonic Ring portal effect from Sonic the Hedgehog. As you can see, there's a few little fiddly steps, but this isn't really that hard of an effect to achieve. You can even get really fancy with this and track the ring in 3D space, if you like. Now, once again, a big thank you to our sponsor Video Prop for sponsoring the episode. You can check their links out in the description. But for now, guys, that's all I got for you. If you did enjoy the episode, please smash that like button. I really do appreciate it and it does help out. If you do have an effects request, leave it down in the comments because I read every single one of them and you'll probably get a little hard on yours too. Now, before I close this one out, guys, there is another Sonic tutorial that I really would recommend checking out, and that's Harshi over at Red Giant's Sonic FX tutorial. He covers a whole bunch of stuff over a long period of time, and it is just awesome. So you can click that in the card above. You will not be sorry. Now, if you are unsubscribed and you're not completely repulsed by my egg-shaped face, you can just hit that subscribe button below and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss a single film learning episode. I've got two other episodes right over here and around about 300 on the channel. And I've also got all my social media crap here if you want to check out behind the scenes and musings from this demented brain in general. That's right here. If you want to help support us, you can click the Patreon button there or you can join up with a YouTube membership by clicking that join button below. But until I see you again, guys, keep learning.